Morning. Okay, Matt back again. So, um, what I'm going to do today is take you through my first um, retinue for Baron's War. Okay, I'm going to take you through it, give you the points, and uh, give you an explanation of why I've arrived at each unit, what each unit represents. So, Baron's War, it's not long out, okay, it's um, the officially it's due out this month. Um, Kickstarter has gone through two already, Kickstarter 1, Kickstarter 2, I think there's a third one on the cards as well. Looks like a game that a lot of people are going to be playing once we get out of lockdown, if some people haven't already started. So I thought over the last couple of months I would get a retinue together um, ready because I've got a couple of friends who are also going to play uh, with me when we get out of lockdown. So I put together my first retinue and if you've been watching the channel you know over the last few weeks i've been basically painting up my um, byzantines yeah and my byzantines are my first thousand point retinue so let me take you through exactly what we've got so just a little quick thing about baron's war so consider this video really part one in a series and this is the setup so in baron's war um, you get a retinue you can have as many points as you like, okay, but they recommend around a thousand points. That will give you probably between 40 and 50 models. Each model is a man, so it's one to one. Each model gets an attack dice or more, depending on the situation. Okay, so it's a, it's a skirmish game, okay, a small unit skirmish game. Um, basically, units are divided into infantry and uh, horse. Horse units, cavalry are a minimum of two in a unit. Um, infantry units, warrior units as they call them, are in a minimum of three. So you must have at least three in a unit. From a couple of practices I've had, I've discovered that probably six is where you want to be to begin with. You don't really want to go smaller than six because what will happen is you'll get broken and shocked really quickly. Um, and you will lose basically because morale plays a very big part in this game okay right so let me take you through the um the retinue so like i say a thousand points just a couple of quick things before i go on you must spend at least uh 10 percent of those points on green units so units are green irregular regular and veteran okay some units aren't uh all of those four things for example levies i don't think there are any veteran or regular levy units okay because they're so such poor quality troops um some units aren't green there are no green knights for example okay green is basically inexperienced but you know se several of the warrior units are in those four different categories spearmen they're pretty much the catch-all uh unit you can give you know they're quite a, quite a wide range of different troops so if it's if you can't decide to make your unit anything else make them spearmen okay so here we go so um 10 percent on green units inexperienced units and you can spend you must have a command unit i'll come to that in a moment that as contains your commander you can have more than one command unit so you can have more than one commander um, but you can only spend up to 50% of your points total on command units. So I could only spend 500 points. Now, I'm not, actually, I'm not sure if it's points total or number of units, 50% of your units. I think it might be 50% of your units. So if you've got 10 units, only five of them can be command. I'll have to look that one up. So, um, yeah, let's go then. So the inexperienced troops, my 100 points is these guys. These are my... Um, spearmen they're basically um eight green spearmen now in um baron's war you get a list of uh equipment which a, a unit can have and different pieces of equipment cost points to, so they add to the overall total of the unit um, i'm not going to go through individual costs i'm just going to talk about points totals of units so uh, for example with these green spearmen i've added mail and i've added a small shield and so overall, eight of them have cost me 104 points, which is just over the 10%. I didn't want to spend any more than 100 points on uh, green forces. What and That would be ridiculous. Why would I spend 200 points on a bunch of inexperienced troops? So I've gone for the bare minimum. So I'm kind of playing the game a little bit there. So they are my green inexperienced spearmen. Probably just been 
asked to join in the battle. Um, they'd been recruited that day, dragged out of their houses. Grab your spear, grab your tiny shield, mate. Come on, we're going for a battle. Okay, so that's them. Okay, so the other end, end of the uh, equation, the extreme, is my um, elite veteran knights. Okay, so these are cataphracts, they're mounted knights, they're veterans. They've got plus a lance and plus a medium shield. So I'm paying for a lance and a medium shield. And there's five of them, and they are 170 points. So you can see the points different straight away. I get eight for 104, and uh, basically I get five for 170. So they're quite expensive, but not a massive amount of it, difference in expense there, to be honest. Okay, 170 points, five uh, veteran knights uh, with lance and medium shield. Okay. My other veteran unit are my Varangian Guard. At the moment, I've only got four of these. To be honest, I couldn't afford any more with the amount of points I've got. Maybe I could phase out another unit later. These guys are sergeants. So in uh, Baron's War, basically you've got... Um, there's about four different, five different um, warrior units. So there are bowmen, crossbowmen, um, spearmen, sergeants and levy okay um so you basically need to fit your particular troop type into whatever they um they uh, decide it could be so these are sergeants all right so sergeants are basically experienced warriors okay they're kind of the you know they're, they're not the elite okay they're not they're not knights but they are the ex most experienced warriors these are sergeants they are veterans Okay, now there's a bit of a thing in the rules where it says veteran sergeant and sergeants who can be veterans. That's a bit of a weird thing. But a veteran sergeant in the rules is basically a commander. Okay, in, in, in Baron's War you get a knight commander, a lord commander, a baron commander. Okay, um, and you get a veteran sergeant commander. So you, they're basically different degrees and quality of commanders. Okay, and then you've also got a lot of characters as well, which is quite interesting. Okay, so I've given these male, I've given them a medium shield, because they've also got a sword, but the sword is free because they're sergeants, okay, and I've given them a Dane axe as well, which is costs, uh, I think, about three points. So altogether, for four of them, that's cost me 116 points. Now, I had a few points left over, so I've given them an ability, I've given them fear, okay, now that's per, uh, you get, basically you have to pay per um, model, and now that's one point per model, so that's another four points that brings them up to 116, okay, overall. Uh, fear, basically anybody who attacks them, charges them, has to make a morale roll in order to charge. Okay, there's loads of abilities in Baron's War that you can add to your units if you can afford them. Okay, most units have got inherent abilities. Okay, I'm not going to go through those now, I'll go through those later. But essentially, they have inherent abilities, but you can also add at least one ability per action that the unit can take in each turn, okay? So basically, I've added the ability of fear, so they, so basically anyone who charges them must make a morale roll, basically because they're very, very scary, aren't they? Which is what they should be. Okay, uh, next unit, another unit of spearmen. Okay, slightly more experienced these time. this time. These guys are... Um, Regular spearmen, okay, sorry, no, these guys are irregular spearmen, all right, couldn't, didn't have the points to make the regular, so irregular spearmen, again, plus male and plus a medium shield, so, uh, that guy's spear's slightly bent there, I don't know how that's happened, okay, plus male and plus a medium shield, and they've cost me 102 points, so six spearmen, irregular, plus male, plus a medium shield, has cost me 102 points, okay, um, I'll come down here now to another unit. So these are uh, so basically the sergeants again. So like the Vrangian Guard, these are a sergeant's unit, okay? But they're basically swordsmen is what they are in my game. They're regular sergeants, okay? So they're tougher. So they're probably, you know, these are the backbone of my, of my, of my unit at the moment, my retinue. So these guys alongside the Vrangian Guard are the two uh, toughest units at the moment. Regular sergeants, they've got a sword, which is free actually, and a medium shield, which I have to pay for. The mail on regular sergeants is, um, I thought the mail was free actually, I might have to pay for the mail. I think I might have missed that out. Okay, I thought that they got mail. Maybe not, 
<laughs> okay, I might have to look that one up. But they should be wearing mail as well. They were 132 points. Okay, so regular sergeants. I think I might have uh, paid too much for the mail and the ranking guards. I'm pretty sure the sergeants get mail for free. We'll see. Okay, so uh, final normal unit is uh, archers. I've gone with 12 archers. Now, the reason I've gone with 12 is I reckon that... Um, Missile troops and um, bow, uh, ranged attacks are really, really good in this game. I think that if when you play this game, you're going to find that peppering somebody with um, arrows or slings, slingshot or crossbow bolt or whatever is going to be really effective because morale is a massive part of this game. And it all um, breaking and uh, shock... Okay, which is what are the two different ways in which a unit can be disordered. Basically rely on the percentage of units that are destroyed within a particular unit. So if you can reduce a unit down by taking out several of its models to 25% or 50%, okay, depending on which you do, you can really, you can screw a unit up completely. So if you can shoot at a unit as early on as possible with as many shots as you can you could probably break a unit immediately you might even break a, a veteran unit immediately I'm go and when i play this i'm going to see just how effective ranged attacks are because i think they are very very good okay i think they've got a range of about 18 inches i'm not 100 percent, but okay so i think if you play this game i would i suggest having a very large unit of um, archers okay and i've gone for 12. i think the multiples in this game are pretty much i would go with six nine and twelve as your um unit sizes okay six nine and twelve at least for infantry maybe not for maybe not for cavalry but for infantry six nine twelve are probably the uh, the the numbers that you want and that's certainly what i've aimed for there so that's um 12 archers okay archers they're called bowmen in this okay these are regulars i've given them leather and padded armor they're not i don't think they're allowed to wear mail okay um, and they are 204 points so they're they're five percent of my overall total but i think they are worth it i think they're a key unit okay and we'll find that out when we play the game okay finally my command unit okay so the way it works in this basically is you choose a commander, he's either a baron, okay, uh, a knight, a lord, or a sergeant. So there's different degrees of commander. So it's a little bit like, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of commander levels, okay. So, you know, it's the same as in other, other games where you've got different levels of quality and ability, okay. So at the top, you've got the baron. So these are the aristocracy, the king will also fit into that category as well then lord then um sorry then knight then lord then sergeant okay i might have confused knight and baron to be honest okay so what they do what you what do you have to do with this okay you pick a commander there he is on the right hand side okay with his sword okay you pick a commander you pay for the commander yeah and then you add him to a unit. You have to add him to a unit. Commanders don't wander around the field on their own. They're part of a unit. And you might say to me, well, what's the point of having more than one command unit? Well, the point is that if he dies, another commander will take over. That's the point, okay? I prob probably wouldn't suggest having more than... I don't know, I haven't played the game, so I'm not sure how often a commander will die. If I find that after playing it a couple of times, the commanders just aren't dying because they're so tough, then um, I might only limit it to a couple of command units, okay? I don't think you will need 50% of your army to have command units, okay? That seems quite excessive, okay? You can't have more than one named character on the field at the time, and what I mean by that is a, a, a of the same name, okay? My guy in my um, foot, in the footsore ones for the Western Knights, for the Barons War Knights, I'm basically going to have um, Fitzwalter, okay, because I like the Rebels. I can't have more than one Fitzwalter on the, on the battlefield at any one time, but you can have as many characters as you want. So you can have character uh, units as well. And what I'll do is when I... Character troops, and when I um, actually paint up all the foot sword um models i will um, tell I talk, i'll talk you through that as well okay so he on his own okay is 51 points because he's i've given him a pennant now pennant gives him a nine inch um command um 
uh, nine inch radius command sphere. Okay, so we can command units within nine inches. That's the guy with the pendant there. When you give somebody an upgrade like a pendant or a, a banner, okay, you must give it to a model in the unit, okay, that you add them to. And that, that man isn't free, okay. I have read the rules and, I, and I'm pretty 100% sure, sure on this because it's the pennant is only something like seven points or something like that, okay. So you're not going to get a man for seven points. So basically just one of the men in the unit becomes the pennant man or the bannerman, okay. So he is added to a unit of five swordsmen, yeah. Okay, they're regular sergeants. They've got sword, mail, and a large shield. I'm giving them a large shield. Okay, that gives them a much higher role for defense. Yeah, so this is a tougher unit. So a regular unit of five swordsmen, six including the commander. Okay, he will roll set a separate dice, even though he's part of the unit because he's got a different stat line. Okay, so if I've got, say, green dice for that the whole the five of them then he will have a blue die so roll them all together but keep his die separate okay so you know that he is fighting slightly differently but he is basically part of the unit so you buy your unit you buy your commander you add your commander to the unit and if you've upgraded them with a um, a bannerman or a musician or something like that then that put that becomes a model in the unit now i think what you could do is you could just add a model to represent the bannerman but that's they they're a non-combatant yeah they won't get any dice rolls because i can't see how you can pay 15 points for a bannerman yeah and then add him to a unit when you've already paid about 30 points for the other figures in the unit there's no way that the bannerman should be allowed to fight in the same way as the other models in the unit so i'm thinking there's either two ways of doing it you either add a non-combative model which is just a representation of the bannerman yeah, or the musician, or the priest, yeah, or you make a, a model within that unit, um, the bannerman. Okay, so you kind of put aside one of the one of the models in the unit for the bannerman, and that's what I've done here. So this bannerman, I paid for him. He's a, he's a regular sergeant, okay, but he's carrying the banner, so he will fight, but he's also representing the bannerman as well. Okay, so that's the way units work. So. Um, I've got quite a lot, haven't I? I've got, um, well, quick maths, Matt. Okay, I've got 12, 24, 24, 34, 35, 43, 44, 45, 46, 40. I've got 47, um, 47 uh, models, which I think is, is quite big. That's a lot of models, actually, for... Um, for Baron's War, okay, because they say around, you know, 40 models, so this is a big unit, so a thousand points, you you probably don't want to be playing, it seems to me, you don't want to be playing more than a thousand points, okay, because, you know, 47 models, it's a skirmish game, yeah, you do not want to be playing, um, you know, 200 models or something like that for a skirmish game, so I reckon a thousand points aside, I think you're probably looking at uh, three hours play, yeah, something like that maybe. But what I would would say is um, morale plays such a massive part in this game that you could be finished in an hour because you know once you I destroyed your infantry with my archers and my uh, my cratifracts have charged in a couple of times. Then uh, that's it for you guys. Okay, so you know, um, yeah. So there's a good chance that you will uh, probably. I think it will go pretty quickly because I I think the fact that morale plays such a massive part, and the percentage of your unit being whittled down actually affects your morale so heavily. Um, I think that you could probably be playing it in an hour. Okay. So I would say an hour to three hours. Can't see it lasting more than that. Okay, which is probably the you know it's the number the, usually the average, the average time of a thousand two fifty points, bolt action game. Okay, so that's it then. That's my first retinue for Baron's War. And what I'm just going to do now, very quickly, because I'm very proud of these guys, so I'm going to just show off a little bit here. Um, these two. 
are my new retinue. So these are from Futsal. These are the Futsal troops that I dug out of the um, box the other day, and I said I was going to put these together. And I've just I meant to start. I've done um, my first command unit. So this is a command unit which will add to a unit. These are commander and a bannerman. Okay. Okay, I think Bannerman is 15 points, so Commander and a 15 point Bannerman that I'm going to add to a command unit. So this will be for my my Western Knights, my English, not English, they're French aren't they really, they're all Normans to be honest. Okay, can't quite get a look on his face there. Okay, so, so this is the start of my next retinue, okay. So I could have these guys fighting the Byzantines. So... Nice banner, yeah. The banner is this is um, uh, oh, oh, William. Um, oh, well, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Abignon, I think his name is, and he is um, Abindale, something like that. And he is the Earl of Arundel. Okay, that's that's who that is. So he is basically my one of my commanders on the field. Fitzwalter is my other commander, and with this unit, with my um, English retinue, I'm certainly going to have two command units. Yeah, I'm gonna have two command units. I have Fitzwalter in one, and um, uh, the Earl of Arundel in a second. Okay, so they're not part of this retinue. Okay, and in fact, if they did appear, these guys would all attack them immediately. Okay, <laughs> so there you go. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed looking at this. Um, this is part one of Baron's War setup. So this is the setup. So as soon as I get the second retinue painted up, I will. Um, showcase those. I might split this Byzantine retinue into two, 500 points a piece. And as soon as the rules come through, um, I've got the PDF, but it's a bit fiddly. Okay, I can't afford to print it all off. Um, as soon as the book comes through, I will do a setup and a battle rep. Okay, and we'll see how this game goes. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, please like and subscribe. Any put, stick anything in the comments you want. Also, any questions about Baron's War, I might answer. I've had a few questions myself. Okay, the rules are good, but there's a few little mm, what does that mean? Kind of ambiguities here and there. Okay, um, um, and so I think I'm pretty up on it so far. If you've got anything that you disagree with me on, okay, you want to put me right, then do that as well because that helps people too. Okay, thanks for watching, and uh, next video hopefully will be a Baron's War. Battle rep. Okay. Have a good day and take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.